Recent explanations for long-run economic growth have had at their core the actions of individuals and households in determining the growth path that occurs. So, for instance, when we look at Britain uh, back in the 14th century, the Black Death is accredited with creating, obviously, um, devastating population decline, but also labour shortage and high wages for workers. This had an impact in terms of choices of technology and ultimately industrialisation. But the question is, what were families doing or, or what was um, happening that encouraged real wages to be maintained in Britain, whereas in much of Europe, they were eroded by subsequent population growth? And the answer that's been given is late marriage, that it's shifted to a pattern of late marriage, which meant that there was uh, lower fertility and population kept more in line with economic resources. But the evidence we actually have on this is quite sketchy. We know a bit about men's wages, but we don't know very much about women's choices in this, or indeed their wages. And some have even questioned whether Northwest Europe and Britain was that different to the rest of Europe in any case. So these are the sort of questions I want to unpack in this course and look at the debates, the evidence on how the family operated in these key moments in history. The course takes a long time frame. Um, as I've mentioned, we start in the medieval period, but we'll go on and look at the 16th and 17th centuries where the Industrious Revolution occurred, or purportedly uh, occurred, with households producing more for the market so that they could buy novel consumer goods. Then industrialisation itself, and particularly the work of women and children and the importance of their work to industrialisation, but also the impact it had on them, both as workers in terms of welfare and gender inequality. And we'll move right up to the 20th century, where we'll look at, uh, again, things like fertility, domestic technology, choices about education, and how this impacts on economic growth and welfare. The geographical spread is, is predominantly Britain with um, some sort of emphasis on other European countries, but we will look at the applicability of these theories and explanations for other times and places in the classes. Well, I think bringing the family, the small scale actions of individual, ordinary men, women and children into mainstream history is, is one of the very exciting parts here. But there's also a couple of features of the way we'll approach the course that I just want to mention. Firstly, although a lot of this work, the grand theories, the meta-narratives, are becoming the current orthodoxy, there's less actual empirical evidence to underpin these um, understandings of the household and the way they, they interact to create these effects in the economy. So what we'll be looking at is current debates. We'll be looking at uh, discussion and, and dispute about what actually happened and the evidence to support this. So I'll be introducing you to things that are very much at the forefront of current thinking. Secondly, I also want the classes to pick up on these debates, but to give you the opportunity to actually look at some of the data sources more interactively. So for instance, I'll give you things like some household budgets to try and analyse, maybe some children's autobiographies to look at and discuss and consider. And hopefully from this, you'll also get a feel for the opportunities and the limitations of the historical sources with which we can look at how households operated. Well, most of the issues we'll tackle are actually perennial ones. So for instance, what are the factors that lead to the use of child labour? What sort of things can help prevent the use of child labour? Does the increased labour force participation of women actually always and everywhere increase or decrease gender inequality? And what can we understand about the child quantity quality trade-off uh, in both historical and contemporary settings? So I think what, what uh, this course will give you is the ability to ask these questions in a detailed way in historical context and that that can then enable you to actually ask similar questions or think about what questions to ask in more contemporary settings.